Okay, welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. If you watched the last episode, I talked about go to your boat, even if it's gonna rain, you'll find things to do, it'll be fun, believe me. And the summer will seem longer because you'll get more time on your boat. And nothing feels like summer like being out on your sailboat or your power boat or your cottage, wherever you gotta go. Don't stay home just because it's gonna rain. Anyways, today's episode is gonna be about this. As you saw, I packed my car full of stuff and at the last minute I decided to bring my iMac Pro, which is, you know, I've gotta edit videos and it takes like eight hours per episode to edit. And my laptop is slow. I have a, I'm a MacBook Pro 13 inch, which is not as strong as the 15 inch. And it's, it's oh my God, since I got the iMac Pro, it's like chewing broken glass when I edit on the laptop. This thing, I love my, my uh, iMac Pro, but this is a test. Can I edit from inside my sailboat using nothing but battery power and solar panels? I don't think there's anybody else on YouTube. You tell me if you can find anybody else on YouTube that's gonna showcase trying to edit on an iMac Pro within a sailboat only using battery power. I don't think you'll find it. So let's check that out. I'm gonna plug it in now because today is the end of the previous episode's day when it's been sunny, it's still sunny right now, and the solar panel's still kicking out some decent amps. And then I'll plug it in again tomorrow when it's supposed to be raining, at least be overcast if not raining, when the solar panels won't be really chugging out the high amps. And we'll see if it can handle that as well. So if it can handle it in sun, maybe it won't handle it in clouds. Maybe it'll handle it in both. So we'll find out. And that's coming up in this episode of Cruising Off Duty. Check it out. Okay, here we go. Breaking open this bad boy, putting him on the uh, salon table here. Last but not least, the keyboard and the mouse. And that's it. Easy peasy, two pieces. That's the great thing about an iMac of any kind, but the iMac Pro has a little more power than the regular iMac, but uh, they're both the same layout. One screen is your computer, and then you just have a wireless keyboard and a mouse, and there we go. So, gotta figure out the where the cord is. Okay, here we are in my bedroom, and this is where we've got the 3000 watt inverter set up, right here. I used to have a 1000 watt inverter. This is now a 3000 watt inverter. You might ask me, why did I go from 1000 to 3000 watts? Because of Janice. She wanted to use a hair dryer on the boat, and hair dryers are like 1200 to 1500 watts, and our inverter was only 1000, so we had to scrap that one and go get a 3000 watt inverter. Now we can pretty much run a microwave oven or whatever we want. It's all about how much your battery bank can handle power getting sucked out of it. We've got four house batteries of the normal big ones. Uh, you know, car looks like a car battery, but it's a deep cycle. And we have those under my bed here. As you can see, this is my bed. Batteries are under my bed. That's why the inverter is so close because these big thick wires are what connects to the batteries. So let's turn that on. As you can see, I got tons of power, 13.4 volts. So solar is kicking it out. My fridge is not even close to using all the solar power I have. And that's why I have high hopes that this, this iMac Pro, which I've set up here, is going to be able to handle all the extra juice that the solar panel cooks out. Now, I probably won't be able to use it when it's dark, of course. I'll just drain the batteries immediately. So it'll probably be one of those things I'll only be able to edit when it's daytime. But yeah, it's better than not editing at all, right? So, Let's check it out. Okay, it's the moment of truth. I have the iMac, the keyboard, the mouse, and I'm gonna have a hard drive hooked up and then I'm gonna power up. You're gonna see the inverter go from 0% use to who knows how much, that's the trick. And even if it can handle it, which I'm sure 3000 watts, it's gonna handle it. It's how quickly do the batteries drain? That's the big question. So fingers crossed it works. Okay. We are ready. So I have the one hard drive that I use right now. This is the one I'm using to edit my most recent videos, the MacBook and uh, the whatever power these, well, they don't actually use power off the main screen. So we'll see. Oh, I'm, I, I usually at home have like three, four hard drives all connected at the same time, which I'm assuming each one of those sucks a little bit of power, but let's check this out. So the inverter right now shows zero, which is how much, how many watts it's using. And we've got 13.2, 13.1, obviously the sun is going down. So the solar is not kicking it out. Oh, if we want to know what the solar is doing right now, let's go in here. Okay, so right now we're at 13.4 volts. The solar panel is bringing in 14.4 volts at 5.6 amps. And uh, yeah, uh, my output, I don't have it wired, so it tells me what my usage right is, but it's telling me I'm bringing in 5.6 amps. Let's power up the iMac and see what happens. So as you saw, it was at zero. So now I've got to hit the power button down here. 
Oh, I can already hear the inverter. I can already hear the inverter kicking on. Hear the fan? So, holy crap. I saw at 1.230, 200 watts. I hope that's 200, not 2,000 watts. Might be 2,000 watts now that I think about it. But obviously it's handling it. Batteries are staying at 12.8. Now it's only 90 watts. Might be a zero on there. Maybe that's 900 watts. I don't know. Let's assume that's 900 watts. Anyways, I think when you first powered up, that was the highest point. I saw 200, I think I even saw 230 there for a second. But as you can see, <laughs> this is working. Look at the size of the screen. It's huge. 27 inches. All right, let's get rid of that. This is just the way my screen was set up at the time with all the different hard drives. Sweet. Now, let's try uh, pushing it a bit. I'll put on Final Cut Pro. Let's get it to render a file. This is, this is just an intro. This is just an intro. It's only a short file, but I mean, if that'll, that'll test the battery power. And then I'm going to tell it. As you can see here, this little, this little circle, it's rendering stuff right now anyway. So let's go test. It's doing some renders because it just opened it in a new setup. And so far, whew, so we're doing uh, whatever 200 is. I don't know if that's 2,000. I'm guessing that's 2,000. And the batteries are staying at 12.6. 130, 140, I'm assuming means 1,300, 1,400. So obviously as you render, it gets up to in the 200s, which I'm assuming means 2,000 watts. And uh, yeah, so it's putting some pressure on the batteries, but it seems like even in today, right now it is 627 p.m. So obviously the sun is low in the sky. We're not getting a ton of solar, 5.6 amps, and it's getting less as the, as the day goes on. And the batteries are keeping up with it. So I'm pretty excited. It means I'll be able to edit at least when it's sunny, even till late in the evening. That's awesome. Tomorrow's gonna be the big test because tomorrow it's supposed to rain. And I know how solar usually works when it's raining, especially overcast is bad enough, but when it's raining, you don't get a whole ton of solar power, but maybe there's still enough that I can edit on a rainy day. That would be perfect. If not, I got to switch to my laptop, which I don't want to do. Editing on my laptop now that I'm used to this is like chewing broken glass. It really is painful. So anyways, I'm going to call this a success. If at 630 at night, I've got enough solar to not have the batteries drain when I'm bringing out 2000 watts of power through my inverter because of this beast behind me here. So, here we go. Final Cut Pro. Call it test on a boat, next. Save. And let's go see. Let's go see what happens. Oh, see it went up a bit. It kind of fluctuates between, let's add a zero to every one they show us. 150, so 1500 watts up to 200 watts kind of goes up and up and down a bit but it's a 3000 watt inverter so the inverter can definitely handle it it's whether the battery bank will drain too quickly but it's staying at 12.6 volts that's pretty damn good considering we're not getting a ton of solar at this point so yeah so this will be part one of the episode and then i'll come back tomorrow when it's cloudy and crappy and we'll try it again so stay tuned look at that just before i go for today so that rendered really quick, of course, because it's a fast computer. Good morning. But... morning. It's uh, Friday, June 15th. We're getting ready to go head to Alexandria Bay and Bolt Castle today. Yeah. So there we go. I love this computer so much. I really, really do. It's a ton of money, but it, it's well worth it. It's so much easier to edit with this. And it's a 5K screen, so everything looks crystal clear. I mean, I don't even... Most of the time, I don't even e edit in 4K. I edit in 1080p. I have the ability to do it in 4K. But this is a 5K screen, so it's sort of like future-proofing it when cameras are coming out that are shooting in 5k i'll still be able to do it with this screen and it just looks amazing with movies or anything else you have on there so super happy with this computer and now super happy that i can edit while i'm on my sailboat is that incredible or what
Okay, so I've had the computer running for a while and the batteries are staying at 12.7 and that is with the fridge running full blast because I just topped up the coolant and the fridge was off for a while and now it's on and it's just going nonstop to try and get to the right temperature. So the fridge is running full blast, the computer's going full blast. I'm sure the brightness is set almost to the highest because I, I like my screens nice and bright. And the batteries aren't getting drained even past 6.30 at night. I'm hearing voices. Somebody must be beside my boat. Um, I'm not going crazy, really, I'm not. Um, yeah, so that's exciting. Exciting that such late in the day I'm still able to do it. The other thing I was thinking of is I could always shut off the fridge if I was editing on a rainy, cloudy day. If I needed a little bit more capacity in my batteries, just turn the fridge down. There we go. Because that's probably chugging a ton of amps out of the system as well. But the fact that the batteries are actually doing fine is really impressive. The other thing that's kind of cool, I gotta love Apple for this, everything is connected. I've never, clearly I've never brought my iMac Pro to the boat where I'm in the marina and there's Wi-Fi here. And I get here and all of a sudden I notice that I have internet access on my iMac Pro. I'm like, what? How is that possible? So I go into settings, sure enough, I'm on the, um, the uh, Portsmouth Marina Wi-Fi with my computer, which has never been here before. And the only thing that makes sense is because I've got the password set in my iPhone, it's automatically put the password for the Wi-Fi into my desktop, which is amazing. Yay, Apple, for all of my little components talking to each other. So that's pretty cool. So here I am looking at Amazon on, uh, on Wi-Fi on my computer. Let me just go to YouTube. I don't know how fast the, uh, the internet is here to whether YouTube's gonna be a real, not because the computer can't handle it, but because the Wi-Fi might be a bit slow. So let's just see, can we watch, uh, Gone with the winds. That is pretty impressive. I mean, look at how clear that is. And the fact that, let me pause that so you can hear me. The fact that it's like, it, it started right away and it's crystal clear means the, actually the Wi-Fi here at the, at the marina is pretty damn fast. Cool. So that means when I edit here, I can upload to YouTube my videos to you guys super fast. I'm super excited. It's like I got a home theater in my boat. Awesome. And keep watching this episode now. Good morning, everyone. So today is day two of the test of the iMac Pro on the boat. Um, today is the forecasted rainy day I was talking about yesterday. And yeah, it's coming. Check out, this is my... Uh, this is my uh, iPad 12.9 inch. It's amazing. This is a big iPad, but when you see it beside this iMac, it looks small. But nonetheless, this is the storm that's coming and it's going to be buckets of rain soon. So this is Kingston where we are and this is going to be heading towards us if I hit play. There we are. Do do do. It's coming. It's coming. It's only 9, not even 9 in the morning. Well, 9 in the morning now and the solar is keeping up with the fridge. Uh, as the fridge has been running all night because it was actually turned off before I got to the boat. As you can see, it is still humming away. But it is colder than it was yesterday, so that's good. But what that's telling me is that when it's overcast, especially early in the morning, the solar more than handles the fridge, but I don't think it's going to handle this thing. Now, I won't give up on it until noon when the sun would be the highest, uh, hopefully even through the haze, uh, might get enough solar to run this. If not, I'm not gonna be editing on my iMac today, even though it's raining and I'm gonna get stuck inside. That was the grand plan. So, and on top of that, I just noticed this morning that the internet from the um, Portsmouth Marina here was not working this morning. So, combination of maybe no computer and no internet is gonna make for a very unproductive day. So I might end up being using my iPad here to just fritter the day away watching TV and movies. I do have lots of those. So, but anyways, we're not giving up yet. It's only nine in the morning. I'm gonna go have my shower on shore and then uh, yeah, have breakfast and see how the day goes. I'll get back to you when I'm done. Ooh, yeah, you can tell a storm is coming. Feel it in the air. Now, hopefully it's not too windy for the microphone, but I'll just turn the camera around. You can see the flags snapping along. This camera always makes everything look lighter than it actually is, but over there on the horizon, it's definitely starting to look dark. Okay, back from the shower. Feeling good, feeling fresh. Wind is really picking up though. I don't know if you can hear the wind noises and the boat being 
bucked against the dock there. And good news, good news, even though it's still, of course, overcast and crappy, uh, my bolts on my battery are up to 2.5. It was at 2.2 when I first woke up, and we're bringing in about 2.8 uh, amps from the solar panels, but it's being up converted through the uh, smart controller to 3.6 amps. And that's more than, I believe my fridge takes about two amps, maybe I'm wrong there, to run. So anything above that is a bonus. And that's why the batteries are going up. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna have my breakfast and then I'm gonna fire up the uh, iMac Pro and uh, see how the batteries hold up. Okay, it is now raining, not just spitting, but raining. And I have my answer. When it's sunny, the solar, 260 watts of solar is plenty to run everything, the fridge, charge batteries for other things, run the iMac Pro. When it's overcast, but you know, bright overcast, still not a problem. A little closer to break even, but still not a problem. When it's gloomy and raining, problem. So right now we're only bringing in 0.8 amps on the solar, and I believe my fridge takes two. And even without the fridge, I think if I ran the uh, big iMac Pro, it would drain the batteries in, in a rainstorm. So clearly I'm not gonna get to edit today like I was hoping because of the rain. So the iMac is gonna stay off and I'm just gonna chill and watch uh, shows on my uh, what is it you think iPad. So not the productive day I was hoping for, but you know, I can't expect miracles out of the solar panels if it's pouring rain like it is now. Can't expect the solar panels to kick out the juice I need, but call it a relaxing rain day. Anyway, that's it for this episode. I answered the questions. An iMac Pro can be used on the sailboat, just certain days it won't happen. So there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If so, give the episode a thumbs up. Continue to follow the channel if you wanna see us cruise around the Thousand Islands this season. We got a lot of things coming up. A lot of things are booked. And until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising. So join me in the next episode of Cruising Off Duty when I'll take you along with me as we go solo sailing. That's right, I'm alone for the next week until Janice joins me in the following two weeks on her vacation. And I'll go over what I have to do differently when I'm the only one on the boat. Needless to say, when you're the only one, it's a little more work and you gotta take a lot more precautions because you fall overboard and nobody's coming back for you. So yeah, you gotta take that into account. And as you saw from this episode you just watched, it was mostly a vlog, which I shot with my vlog camera. In the next episode, I get out the big guns, my GH5 with my better lenses and get more cinematic footage, which is always good. And while I'm showing you some of that footage, I just want to tell you about an exciting new way to follow along with Cruising Off Duty. There is now a free Cruising Off Duty app that you can put on your phone or tablet from either Android or Apple products. And what it'll get you is one-stop shopping, so to speak. You'll be able to find our Facebook page on there, our YouTube channel on there. You'll get notifications. We'll even start to mark on the map where we're going as we're traveling. No matter which app store you go to, just search Cruising Off Duty and you'll find our logo. And that'll be the correct app. Looking at our analytics, it's clear that more and more people are watching their YouTube either on a tablet or a phone. And an app is just the easiest way to get our channel out to you. So put in the comments below if this is something you're excited about. Give it a try, download it, and let us know what you think. And if you want to talk one-on-one -on -one instead of in the comments, this button right here gets you through to our Cruising Off Duty email. So could I make it any easier for you? I don't think so. Anyways, hopefully you enjoy it. Until the next episode, again, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising.